but I haven't really had anything to post. As you saw in the last video, the garage is clean, which is a very important part if you plan on parking a motorcycle in it. So I'm happy to have gotten that far. However, there is one thing that I had not remembered. Moved into this house about three years ago, and the garage door opener is a really nice model. I think it's a genie something or other. But there's one thing wrong with it. I found out that the board is fried. I can't program any of the receivers in the car. I couldn't go buy new remotes for it. So I went to my friend the internet and YouTube, just like everyone else, and I found a really neat product that I'm going to try to build today because I'm that guy and I don't want to spend money. So watch this. Oddly enough, the hardest thing to find are these little guys here, the transistors. I couldn't find them singularly, but you need the 2N2222... 4-2s? Yeah, 2222 in order to make this work properly. Uh, don't ask, I haven't worked with electronics in a very long time, though at one point I was trained to trace circuit boards and things like that for troubleshooting, but I never actually got to use that. But That's a story for another time. Anyway, other things you're going to need, the HM1100 Samsung Bluetooth receiver, comes with this power cable. Um, you could use just about any kind of telephone wire if you wanted to. I'm just the kind of guy that actually has spare cable laying around the house. Wire stripper, not necessary, but it is useful. Of course, we're working with electronics, you're going to need a lot of solder. I personally prefer the rosin core stuff because I don't have to use the rosin. And lastly, a soldering iron. All right, so the basics of this plan is we take the transistor, and because I know not everyone is familiar with knowing what the three different leads on a transistor are, it has a flat edge, so we'll use that as a point of reference. The flat edge, take the middle one, go up, and we're going to connect that to the red speaker wire on the Bluetooth headset, which, yes, we're going to break. Yep, this side of the flat surface is the ground. We're going to have to hook one part of that up to the power ground, which is going to be plugged in at all times under the Bluetooth headset, and we're going to take the black wire that I have, solder it to there, and pull that off because that's going to be used to hit the button. Same thing with this side. We're only going to connect the red wire to it, and let's get started. So, here it is, a Bluetooth headset. Yay. Breaking stuff already. Get rid of that ear clip, we're not going to be needing that. Here it is. Um, an important thing to note, pair it with your phone first. I've already done this because it's going to be hanging up on the garage door opener indefinitely. It is going to be a pain to get up there and push the button to sync it to your phone. Which, as the guy in the video states, that is one of the keys to what makes this secure. Oh geez, tools I forgot to mention you will need. Grab yourself a nice set of these. Because we are breaking stuff. Anyway, the Bluetooth is secure because you need to press the button on it in order to sync it with the phone. So unless someone breaks into your garage, climbs up on a ladder, presses the button, syncs their phone to it, you're going to be just fine. Look at that. Already breaking stuff. Now the key is, you got to grab this and twist it. Now if you break the black wire, that's fine. Break the red one, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Alright, going off camera for a second there, I had to look at it a little closer just to, just to see what I could see, right? So what I'm going to do is try to get in there. I'm going to have to put it on the table for this so you won't be able to see as well and to actually cut the wires from the speaker. See, it's just dangling on there. So that I can slip that off. Now if that doesn't work, you're going to see me use this like an angry monkey, crush the black piece, and try to pull it off that way. Well, let's hope for the best here, okay? Ah, crush. By the way, if anyone hasn't soldered before, you, you cannot appreciate the smell I have from this thing being plugged in and heating up right now. Oh, 
products. The attempts on making one of these different countries, I believe, is continuous when they grow some of the new models of the 1800s. Also, so that means, oh, 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 oh,
Come on. I'm gonna do is bend this over like so. So the flat side is right against there. Alright, so that looks like it's gonna make a decent connection. Hopefully I don't burn my hand again. Watch this magic. Ho ho ho. Alright. Black wire goes to our grounded side. One thing you might notice, um, this is never ever meant to be unplugged. And one of the questions I saw someone post on their video was, well, what's going to happen when the power goes out? And he said, well, quite obviously your electric garage door opener is not going to work either. The needle nose pliers, they keep getting smaller and smaller. I'm not saying you actually need all these. And let me tell you, the video I'm linking to, he makes it look so much easier. But if it were easy, where's the fun in that? Uh, okay. Oh, all you guys are going to get is a video of my giant fingers messing around with wire. It'd be so cool. One thing I should probably mention is the leads coming off transistors. Not known for really liking to be flexible. So the less you have to bend them, the better. I think that's where I'm going to go with that. i to put the red wire up the side like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what? These wires are getting in my way. Zip tie time. Uh -huh. Look at that. That's all nice and sturdy. Why didn't I do that earlier? Oh my gosh, noob! Oh well. You get what you paid for, folks. And no one's paying me for this. Oh, look at that. It's even going to sit in the way that I can hold the solder in one hand. And this in the other. Oh, it's going to be so cool. You'll see. Okay! Now, you're also going to see in the other video, if he's showing you how to make it, depends on which video I post, uh, he's going to suggest heat shrink. I'm going to unplug my solder guy. And heat shrink is amazing product. I like it. But, um, remember I said I'm cheap? Yeah. What job can't be fixed? A little electrical tape. Not too shabby. Let's see what happens. What you're going to see is one's going to say ground, one's going to say power. Guess which one goes to which? If you followed my example, ground is going to be black, red is going to be power. All right, so here we go. I will admit that I plugged the wires in the wrong way the first time, but there's my connection right there. It's not plugged in yet because I want to make sure it worked. So here's the deal. I named it Garage on my phone so I wouldn't get confused. Press the button, it pairs, and the garage door opens. Hit it again and it stops. Hit it again and it goes down. Pretty neat, huh? All right, everyone, there it is, all buttoned up and neat-like. Look at that, electrical taped all up and down those wires, zip-tied to the support, for support. Got it going up, zip-tied the power cord right there so that there's not any extra stress trying to pull that thing out of the ceiling outlet. And there you have it. So I hope someone found this entertaining, useful, whatever. Oh, well. 
Hope everyone enjoyed. Catch everyone later.